So let's talk about Pauli operators and how the algebraic structure of Pauli operators helps us to design good quantum error correcting codes. At, at least, you know, one class of codes called stabilizer codes. So let me start with a stabilizer then. If you take the, the Pauli group on n qubits, so remember it's a tensor product of um, Pauli matrices, n fold tensor product. Um, we have four Pauli matrices if you include the identity and different locations. And uh, we have to just add those uh, phase factor, remember, in order just to make sure that uh, we have an algebraic structure that is close under the multiplications, we have to put plus minus one and plus minus i factor. So the order of the group is four to the n times four, right? So we have four Pauli matrices, including the identity and different locations, and four different phase factors here. Now, I'm going to look at um, uh, a billion subgroup of uh, this Pauli group. And uh, when I pick um, this abelian subgroup, which I will then call stabilizer, uh, this abelian group of Pauli operators will be responsible for partitioning Hilbert space into subspaces. One of them will be the code subspace, and the other will be called error subspaces. So as, a, as, a, as an example, then, I'm going to use our three qubit repetition code. So remember then we had just one qubit that we encoded into three qubits. And so we are dealing now with the Hilbert space that has dimension eight. And in this particular case, just to give you a specific example of a stabilizer, a stabilizer will be uh, a abelian group uh, which contains the identity, operator z, z identity, identity z, z, Z identity Z. So that means, of course, you know, Z tensor, Z tensor identity. Now, um, the role of those operators, you know, there are different ways of thinking about it, but, but think about uh, them as observables, first of all. Now, the identity is very trivial, of no interest, but if you just take, uh, for example, Z tensor, Z tensor identity and think about it as an observable, you can see that this really is the measurement of the parity of the first qubit and the second qubit. And if you think about it, this Pauli operator as, as your observable, then uh, it's going to bisect the Hilbert space into two subspaces. So Z, Z identity, this element of, uh, of the stabilizer of this group, is going to uh, generate uh, plus one subspace and minus one subspace. So those are two eigen subspaces now. So we, we divided um, the whole eight-dimensional Hilbert space into two uh, four-dimensional subspaces. So there's eigenspace with plus one and eigenspace with minus one for this stabilizer. Okay, then we just go into uh, the second element in this group. This is identity z, z, right? So this is, uh, if you think about it again as a measurement, this is a measurement uh, of the parity of the second and the third qubit. And again, this particular Pauli operator, if you think about it as, a, as, a, as an observable, will split, will bisect the Hilbert space in two subspaces of equal, equal dimension. So you have a plus one, Eigen subspace and uh, minus one Eigen subspace. So you see that this one was doing this bisection, and the second element of the stabilizer was doing this, this bisection. Now we can go to the third element, uh, sorry, to the fourth element in this group, um, but uh, you can also see that the, the fourth one is in fact the product of uh, the second and, and the third. So the, uh, you can easily convince yourself it's not going to introduce any further partition. So what uh, it will do is just uh, you can then simply I identify that uh, the plus or minus subspaces. You, ca you can easily see that the, the, the 
plus one subspace associated or eigenspace associated with this operator will be composed of those two subspaces and uh, the minus one subspace out of those two subspaces. Um, so it, it doesn't introduce any extra thing as far as the partition is concerned. Um, it is only the generators of the group. So we can, uh, as it happens, if you just pick up uh, those two operators here, they are the generator for the group. So the minimum number of elements for this group, for this abelian group, uh, such that the products of those elements will generate the whole group. So in this case, it's just enough to pick up the two. So it is really the generator of this abelian group called stabilizer that do the partitioning of the Hilbert space into subspaces. Now by convention, the subspace associated with plus one eigenvalues for all stabilizer is, is picked up as the code subspace. So in this case, you can see that uh, um, this subspace here uh, has uh, plus one is, is plus one eigenspace of Z Z identity operator, and it is also plus one subspace for identity Z Z operator. So this is going to be our code subspace. Then, if you just pick up any Pauli operator from the group, potentially that that Pauli operator can be can be an error. It can just take our subspace into one of the other subspaces. So, so let's pick up some operator, Pauli operator E. And now, um, how this Pauli operator will act on the subspace? So let's, let's take a vector Psi that is any vector in the code subspace. So it turns out that um, E being a Pauli operator, it can either commute or anti-commute with uh, any element of the stabilizer here. So again, let's, let's focus only on the generators of the stabilizer. So that means that uh, E either commutes or anti-commutes with uh, some elements of the stabilizer. So let's, let's pick up one element of the stabilizer, say S, K. And uh, if E commutes with S, K, then as you can see, that means that uh, this expression here is equal to E S K acting on Psi and that is uh, because this is a stabilizer so the acting on Psi gives you Psi so that is equal to E Psi so as you can see then that um, E acting on Psi is an eigenvector of uh, S K with eigenvalue plus one so if E commutes with a given element of stabilizer if you perform the measurement as you know, defined by the stabilizer SK, you get plus one. So, so if uh, E commutes uh, with uh, SK, then then the eigenvalue is plus one. And uh, you know, by the same sort of line of the argument, if uh, E anti-commutes, then we have here minus e psi. So if e anti commutes with sk, then we have minus one. That means that if you pick up arrow e, and uh, you want to know in which particular subspace you end when arrow e is acting on on any vector in the code subspace. Then you have to simply look, um, you, you take this arrow and you just simply look at different stabilizers, so the generators of the stabilizer, and check with which of them this arrow commutes and with which of them it doesn't commute. And then you identify the subspace the arrow E will take you to. So I think, again, probably the best thing is just to um, do an example. So let's go to our three qubit code. And uh, we have two stabilizers, two measurements, two generators, um, Z, Z identity, and identity Z, Z. And then um, we have, um, let's take, uh, let's pick up our Pauli operator 
X identity identity. So you recognize this as a bit flip on the on the first qubit. So um, so this is my error E, and uh, I'm just uh, now trying to sort of work out where is error where this error is going to take me. So first I just uh, check whether E this particular expression here commutes or anti-commutes uh, with uh, this uh, element of the stabilizer. So as uh, you can check, this one will anti-commute. So that means uh, if I perform the measurement of z, z identity, I just get minus 1. And this arrow, as it happens, commutes with this one. So if I choose, if I perform the measurement of this one, I get uh, plus 1. So those things commute, so those measurements will not uh, mess up anything here. So it means that if you choose this operator and uh, you look at the code space, a vector is initially a vector, your state vector is, is initially in the code space. So what's going to happen is you know that uh, this arrow, x identity identity, will take you to the minus eigenspace of uh, z, z identity. So that means from here you will end up somewhere here. But you're not sure whether it's going to be here or here. It's going to be sort of, you know that it's, it's going to be minus one eigenspace of, of this uh, element of the stabilizer. Um, so then you look at the, the second uh, element of the stabilizer, one z, z, and it tells you that uh, this uh, operation will certainly put you into the plus eigenspace of uh, of this operator here so you will be somewhere here so then you have so you know that one element of the stabilizer tells you that you are somewhere here the other element tells you you are somewhere here so the first one says you are in minus one eigenspace right so you are here and the second one is telling you in the plus one eigenspace you are somewhere here so that means you are here right you are in the intersection of those two so that this way, you know, you can, by checking with which elements of the um, stabilizer your error commutes, you can, you can identify where the error is taking the whole code subspace, to which error subspace you, you go. As you will see in a moment, there are some elements of the Pauli group uh, that uh, commute with every single element of the stabilizer, but they are not in the stabilizer. So that means that they, they play an interesting role here. So they will act, they're called normalizers. Technically, actually, um, in, the, in the group theory, they, we would call them a centralizer for, uh, for they, they, they commute with every single element of this particular subgroup. Uh, but as it happens, it's just those two concepts in this particular case are identical. And I'm not going to go into details. I'll use the word normalizer, and, and I perhaps later on I just explain the, the subtle difference here. Um, but the, the normalizer, so the Pauli operators, which are normalizers, they commute with every single element of the stabilizer. So that tells you that, uh, that they will take the code space into the code space, but they do not necessarily leave it intact. So only the elements of the stabilizer will, will just do nothing to the code space. But uh, when you have the normalizer, and the normalizer will, will actually rotate somehow this, uh, uh, the code space. So it will perform a non-trivial operation on the, on the, on the code space. Um, so a good example of normalizers would be um, Pauli operators x tensor x tensor x or z tensor z tensor z. Uh, we'll come back to them in a moment. But uh, for now, the stabilizer. So the stabilizer is uh, a billion subgroup of the Pauli group um, and uh, we look at the generators of this abelian subgroup and those generators give us a partitioning of our Hilbert space. So if you, if you, in general if you have uh, k qubits and you, en you want to encode them into n qubits so then you are looking at those uh, code subspaces and error subspaces um, then, of course, uh, we need uh, n minus k generators from the stabilizer to define this partition simply because, you know, we start with Hilbert space of dimension 2 to the n. Each generator from the stabilizer will split our um, Hilbert space into two. And so we will have 
then if we have n minus k sub generators, so that will that will give us uh, two to the n minus k different subspaces, each subspace of dimension two to the k. So like here, for example, we had uh, three qubits. So we had uh, a dimensional subspace. In our case, uh, we encoded one qubit into three qubits. So our n is equal to three, our k is equal to one. So you can see that we have, uh, in this case, three minus one, so two, right? So altogether four different subspaces. Um, and we encoded um, one qubit, so they of dimension two. Um, so, okay, so the stabilizers, um, important concept. The next thing we are going to uh, look at uh, normalizers.